we just were playing good basketball. I happened to be the receiver of open shots, and today I was making them. Thank God. Um, same as always, if I'm open, shoot it. Uh, my whole team, coaching staff, they empower me, like, when I'm open to shoot it and I really think about it. Um, I'm very grateful to, you know, be in that position and not really think about misses that much. Yeah, I would say I'm really comfortable with that. You know, I was kind of a six foot guard until I was grade 10 and then grew seven inches. So um, something I did my whole life, but then um, kind of in the last two or three years since um, been with Coach Odom, kind of brought them to college, college level. Um, I think um, we serve a really good – I serve a really good God, and God, uh, I feel like, um, always puts you in a position where you, you're going to look back and be able to thank him for the journey you had to go through to get to where you're at. So um, I'm just very grateful that um, God helped keep my mind sane, you know, and I didn't know what was happening. Is it difficult at all for you guys to get into your own rhythm when the other team is kind of scuffling with you as much as they were? What do you mean by scuffling? I mean, the fact that they were having trouble hitting shots. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a choppy game. Not a terrible amount of flow to the game, at least <coughs> until the middle of the second half. But is it difficult for you guys to keep yourselves in your offense when a game is kind of choppy like that? Um, I, I think it, it definitely slows it down a little bit. Um, you can see, like, they were getting into the end of shot clock a lot of times, but that's what we what we want, you know. Um, so I, I, I think that's really it. We probably got a, a few less field goal attempts than – we usually do, but um, honestly, when they were pressing at the end, it probably brought it up a little bit, um, sp sped it up. But that first half in particular was pretty low scoring. Um, but it's just doing what we do, you know, trying to get stops and then come down and execute, um, listen to what coach is saying, and yeah, go from there. I think um, we've. Uh, you take it, Max. Um, we just just take take it one game at a time. You know, don't really look in the past and just focus on the next game. John, after these three games, three potential performances, come home, get a win, do you feel like you're starting to uh, develop a team identity right now? Yeah, yeah. I would say after um, that George Washington loss, um, <clears throat> we were kind of separated a little bit. And then we had a, had a long talk together. And ever since, just the communication and vibes on the court have been totally different. Um, tighter huddles, just... Like, they're there for each other more. So I think that's really translating on the court. Do you feel like this was one of the most complete performances of the season on both ends of the court? Got to watch it, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I think holding their best – like, we haven't, we haven't held someone's top guy the way we have tonight. So, um, yeah, you're going to win a lot of games if you keep a 20-point score at a two. Um, I, I think it's super lit, I'm not going to lie. Um, as, as you guys know, I've been to a bunch of schools, um, not quite many bands like – actually, I've never been to a school with a band like that. So I think it's super cool to um, see how invested um, musically a basketball game can be. You guys say you want them to play. Any, any requests for the future? Uh, no. I think they're doing a good job. <laughs> Um, I've had a couple of really good conversations with Coach. His biggest thing is just, like, go in there and shoot. If you miss or make them, don't think too much about the misses and makes, which makes it a lot easier to just embrace, uh, you know, being able to do what I'm allowed to do here.
Yeah, I mean, I think it was pretty evident with um, kind of starting confidence 0-2. Uh, you're going to have your, your growing pains. Um, you know, p guys on the team, the, their roles are changing and stuff, but uh, that, that's part of what I was saying after the George Washington game, just like airing everything out, coming together, and um, everyone kind of finding their roles and accepting them. Um, just the momentum, you know, uh, the energy, the energy in the Seagull, you know, the first two games were in, didn't go as like we wanted to or how everyone wanted to, but um, it's, not to, it's nice to just have uh, a first one in the Seagull like that in, in that in that way as well. So uh, just carry over the energy and the momentum and just uh, focus on the little things. Toby, three blocks from two blocks have been very, very effective all year. How does that help out everyone else defensively? Um, it was great. You know, you 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 would you would think like if you get beat one on one, um, you know, having having a having a, having a help like that at the rim is, is is really great. You know, like it doesn't doesn't look that bad when you when you get beat one on one if if there is a if there is a block shot like that coming. You know, so it's really great to have a rim protector like that and uh, um, yeah, that's that. I think to to add to that. Um, like the, the playing at the end of the first half when uh, Shooter was about to shoot and I had to run him off the line, um, you know, because we have Toby back there that turns into, from a layup into a block shot and uh, momentum going our way. So just the ability to close out shooters and get them off, um, taking that away and then kind of having another option at the rim to help you out at the back line. Was that a finger lap from Toby? I think it was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't been able to play, so it was cool to see him um, check into a game, even if it was only for like a minute. And he's been very <coughs> excited for it. So I think we have one of those teams where everyone is excited for everyone else. So it's just, we were all really happy to see him out there. He gave us a gave us a ten point lead. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and uh, but then, what was bigger was the defensive play at the end of the first half by Toby on the other end. Like that gave us they gave us so much energy going in, going back into the into the locker room and uh, it carried over to the second half. John and Max, how do you guys feel about nickname Seven Eleven? Open twenty four seven for buckets. <laughs> <laughs> Someone Something mentioned else. that a week ago, and yeah, yeah that was the first time. Uh, well, this is the first time we're in seven in college, so I mean, I'm a fan of it. That's hard. Same yeah, 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 I like it. Anything else for the players? Thank you. Yeah, great, great win for VCU. Uh, you know, tonight, uh, tremendous crowd. Uh, tremendous energy in the Seagull tonight, and uh, so we're most importantly so thankful for our fans and and uh, being there for us and how loud they cheer each and every night. Um, you know, it's just a great place place to play. It's a great place to coach, and and we're really thankful for everyone that contributed to tonight's win. Certainly, the crowd was tremendous. Um, I thought our players did a nice job. Uh, the staff did a nice job of getting our guys. Uh, talking about our assistant coaches did a nice job of implementing the game plan, getting the guys ready uh, from a defensive standpoint. Um, you know, to face a, a tough team. You know, they've obviously had you know two straight hard games. You know, going to Dayton and going coming to VCU, it's not an easy easy task by any stretch. And um, you know, I thought our guys you know were ready and up to the challenge. You know, right away. Um, and uh, it was kind of back and forth early in the game, and then uh, you know midway through the half, our guys were able to to to, to get a little bit of a lead there heading into halftime, which was important. And um, you know we didn't rebound the ball exactly like we wanted to in the first half. We gave up six offensive rebounds, and and uh, did a much better job in the second half. Didn't give any up, you know, in the second half. Um, when you're forcing misses like that, you want to come up with those those balls. 
uh, because they can lead to transition baskets, and, and certainly some of those did uh, for us in the game. A lot of contributors, you know, everything that Joe was, was putting up was going in tonight. It was one of those nights for him. Um, ball was just finding him, uh, you know, at opportune times for us. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought, you know, the guys overall did a really nice job of sharing the ball, you know, with 15 assists and nine turnovers. Uh, and we had a couple there, you know, right at the end. Uh, you know, Sean's line, you know, was excellent. Um, Max's defense um, on Jemerson was was elite. Um, did a really nice job of, of, you know, you know, part of guarding a guy like that is not letting him get shots off. And, uh, you know, he was only able to get, you know, three attempts up in the game. And I think that's, you know, a credit to Max and his teammates, you know, kind of being attentive to that and being there and being ready. But. Um, you know, excited for the win uh, while understanding that it's still early in conference play. We needed this win, and uh, we've got another tough team coming in on Tuesday, and, and we're just going to focus on our process heading into the next game. You mentioned everybody stepping up. How encouraging to do all that without Zeb being Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, obviously, we all feel for Zeb. Um, Zeb will be coming back here soon, hopefully in the next game. We're not sure yet. That will depend on how his – progress uh, goes over the next couple of days, but uh, he is doing better, uh, which is a good thing, a positive thing. Um, but really proud of the guys. Jay Nell stepped up in a big way. Joe Bam was back to being Joe Bam. And, uh, you know, I thought, um, you know, Sean and Max were, were very good. Toby was great off the bench, you know, for us tonight. And, uh, and, and Firm as well. You know, I think, you know, both of those guys – you know, did a really nice job at the rim of, of protecting our basket. Feel a little good for Nell and Joe. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's no question about it. You know, Joe's a great, great person, and and um, you know, he, he's had a, a couple of tough games in a row, and for him to come back like that tonight was great for all of us to see. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we, we'd, we'd lost our way a little bit defensively. And so that happens, you know, during the season. Sometimes, you know, teams get the best of you. And um, sometimes it could be a one-off, you know, where it's just, you know, teams just extremely hot. It's a weird game. I don't think that was necessarily the case. You know, St. Bonaventure came in here and played really, really well. Uh, George Washington can really score the ball. They're one of the better offensive teams in our conference. And, and they can play in, in the high 80s and, and – you know, uh, really put pressure on you to keep up. Um, but I think after going back and watching the film with the team and with our staff, you know, we felt like, you know, we, we certainly – we knew we could do better, right, than we did. And it's just a matter of, of showing that to the team and making sure that we do it. And uh, it's not on anybody else. It's on us. And that's what I told the team, you know, before the game. You know, this is not about – uh, and nobody else can do this for us, right? We haven't played our best basketball in Siegel yet, right? And we have to do it. And I think, you know, the guys, the guys did a really nice job of setting the tone, you know, here on our home court. It's such a great home court. We want it to continue to be that, where it's just miserable for the other team to come in here. Um, but defense is a big part of that, right? And, uh, you know, I think our guys uh, committed to one another that, it, you know, we might lose, but it's not going to be because we're not defending and uh, not trying to give the best possible effort and connected effort um, on that side of the ball. You mentioned Toby and Jemerson with the veteran presence. Does that enable everybody else to close out a little more aggressively? Than you want yeah, there's no question, but there's a danger in that too. You know, if you're always running over there to block a shot, well, who are you leaving? All right, you're leaving a guy near the rim that's pretty pretty big usually most times, right? And that that can do some damage as well you know, if you don't block the shot. And so it, it, it's something that we have to do. We have to make sure that we're guarding our, our rim more efficiently. And, uh, and Toby certainly is a big part of that. Firm's a big part of that, uh, you know, when we get in those emergency situations where the ball is at the rim. And sometimes we were waiting, you know, Toby was waiting just to go get it as opposed to being there early because now all of a sudden if he leaves, now I can help him. And, and block out, you know, the big guy. We were getting caught in some rotational things, you know, in the first first couple of games, and um, been been better since. Coach, can you describe what you saw with Max Scholder against Jefferson? I mean, just locked in defensively. 
Yeah, it's something, you know, Robbie asked me that, and uh, Rodney asked me that, you know, on the radio. It's just, I've seen it before, you know, those that have coached him, you know, at Utah State have seen that uh, type of defensive effort. Um, you know, he guarded one of the kids that plays for the Warriors now uh, from Santa Clara and, and early in the season last year and did a phenomenal job on him. Um, he's capable of it. When Max is focused on defense and, uh, you know, is accepting of a challenge like that, you know, he's had several games like that in a row. You know, he guarded the kid from uh, Mason, 13, you know, in that game and did a really nice job. So he's – He's understanding now. It's like, okay, I, th my team needs me to do this, but he's not the only one, right? They're all in that mindset right now. Like we've got to, we've got to defend at a high level and make it hard on our opponent. What has been some takeaways from the weekend against Kansas State? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just the confidence at home, right? You know, the way that our guys played. You know, I thought our guys were having fun out there um, and playing. Uh, you know, a, a really balanced game, you know, on both sides of the ball. Uh, when we were able to get stops, we were able to run. And you saw some nice plays in transition that we want to continue to try to replicate. Um, there was some good execution uh, by our guys on both sides. Um, you know, taking care of our ball, you know, is always something that we, we want to aspire to do each, each and every game that we play. But, uh, you know, more than anything, we want to win. Right. I mean, I think ultimately you're not going to play perfectly. Right. You know, you want to celebrate the wins that you have. And, and certainly this is one, you know, that we want to celebrate. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was neat. He's been in there before. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's always itching to, to, to get a basket, you know, and, uh, and that's not easy to do when you're playing at this high level. And, um, but, you know, it's just great to see him out there. It's fun, fun for the players. I'm sure fun for the for the fans and fun for him, you know, like guys in his role, you know, they don't, you know, they're always in the practices and doing that, but, you know, playing in the game is, is, uh, is not something that happens very often, so it's pretty cool. Coach, you have four players with double digits tonight. Can you talk about the work ethic and practice to have an outcome like this? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we have to do every every time we go in the gym, right? And I think this team is established long ago, you know, in the summer, um, you know, that they want to be their best, right? And in order to be your best, you have to work at it. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to attack in life, you know, if you don't put in the work, you're not going to get the results that you want. And so we have a saying and that's in the BDC, huge work you do in the dark will reveal itself in the light. And so that's something that we hammer home with our guys every single day. And they, they do it on their own too, because they love the game. You know, they love to play this game. And so they're willing to put in the extra hours and time that it takes to be successful. Coach, uh, Sean mentioned like a team meeting after the GW game. Can you yeah. go into that at all? What was discussed? Yeah, you... it was a long meeting, you know, where we just have, you know, sometimes teams have to have that. And sometimes it's with coaches, sometimes it's not. This one was. And, you know, I think we had to, we had to make sure that, um, everyone understood, like, this isn't going to happen if we all don't commit to this, right? Like, what, what had just happened was not okay, right? We had just started 0-2 in, in conference play, and we can't be okay with that, all right? And so it's up, up to us, nobody outside of this room, you know, to fix it. Now, we don't know where this thing's going, right? These are, these are tough teams we're playing. This is a tough league this year. Uh, but I am proud of the response, you know, that the guys have had. But we don't want to have blinders on and think that we have it all figured out. It's a process that we have to go about every single day that we come into the gym and, and we come in there together. The focus has to be there. And um, the intensity with which you prep, um, you know, has to be there. And I think the guys certainly are understanding of that. You know, now, and it's hard when you have Joe coming back and Sean coming back and they're trying to get their own games going, right? And then all of a sudden you're, you're thrown right into the fire and it's conference play. Like, that's not an easy thing to do to figure your own self out and still try to help the team because the roles aren't necessarily established. And uh, I think, you know, as we get further away from it, the better it'll get, right? And I think. You know, for us, as long as we continue to, to, to have the intensity and the focus that, that our guys have shown recently, um, we'll get better. You know, we'll continue to improve.
mean, that's ultimately the goal is we want this team to be playing its best basketball, you know, as we approach March and get to the end of the year. Coach, it feels like you guys are starting to develop an identity on the defensive end. How would you kind of describe the team's identity right now? Yeah, I mean, we want to swarm, you know. I mean, I think that's something that we want to do in the half court. You know, we want to force hard shots. We want to protect our rim, you know, and I think you saw that tonight. There was certainly evidence of that, you know, um, when we've been at our best. Um, and then we're not uh, a team that, that leaks threes. You know, go in, in the non-conference, you know, the three-point percentage for our opponents was at 29. Well, obviously, the first two games, were, it wasn't there, right? I mean, I think it was 54, and I can't remember exactly what GW shot, but it was a high number. And so not something that we're going to be okay with, right? And that hadn't been who we were so far that this season. Um, and so I think, you know, defending the three is always going to be, you know, a, a huge thing in college basketball because teams use it. You know, um, it's just something that you gotta, you have to pay attention to. Uh, you were able to play Toby a lot at like the backup five, even though you put him on your five to protect some other guys. Yep. Some small ball lineups like that. What does the versatility and variety, variety on offense look like, and then the athleticism you provide on defense too? Yeah, he's so quick. You know, he could switch on to smaller guys, and you saw him do that today, right? He can guard bigger guys. Um, you know, in the paint, uh, especially when we get help to him. And that's something that we, we have to do, you know, against certain teams. You know, we've had to double, you know, at times. Um, but, you know, Toby's just an elite, elite athlete, elite player, you know, and his best basketball is ahead of him. And so we want to continue to use his gifts, you know, that he has, um, you know, to help our team. And uh, he's, again, he's he, like you were mentioning about the work, right? Um, He's a tremendous worker. Yeah. And then when he's on offense, it seems like you're able to play more of a five out or four out offense. What, is, what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, he's setting screens out there, but it's, I wouldn't necessarily call it five out. We do have five out offenses. We haven't run it a ton, you know, here at, at VCU just yet. But, um, you know, he's got the ability to drive. He's only going to get better at that, um, you know, as he gets deeper into his career. Um, but, you know, he's, uh, he's certainly – uh, an important player for us, you know, on both sides. Last one. Uh, coach, you were talking about Toby Ball. He likes to wait for shots sometimes or for the block. Do you have to coach him differently just by just how much of a unique athlete he is? Uh, I mean, I don't know about differently. It was just coach him as he is, right, and use his gifts. And so, you know, what what we can't do, it's, it's almost like uh, it's like a guy on offense searching for the highlight play, right? And it, you could do that on defense too. And – you know, he was kind of doing that at times, you know, where he was – he would wait for the guy just because he knew he could go over there and jump and block it. Well, that's not what we need you to do. We need you to get your butt over there and put your body in front of the guy and still block it, you know. But now everybody else knows what you're doing. And we could account for your man being free. And so he's a, he's a great learner and a great listener and understand – he never wants to let the team down. And uh, he's not the only one in that regard. And so uh, that's a great, a great trait that we all want to have, um, you know, and, and being there for your team and, and learning, you know, as, as we go together. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.